can't look, Jack, my sister says as we hear they're going to take Nan's body away. So I take her to one side and ask, what's the matter? And she asks, why isn't she alive? There's a clatter in the kitchen as Nan's china shatters on the lino floor. At 15, I barely know what life means, never mind death. There's no chance of a comforting word from Sartre here. So I tell her what I know. I say, if you don't look today, you will regret it forever. And don't worry, she's being cleaned and primmed and looks as nana as ever. Lucy takes my hand and in between walking and getting to the exhumed living room, where countless family members have taken all of the furniture already and would have had the curtain rings too if it weren't for the fact that my granddad was such a fan of Ebenezer Scrooge. I hear the chain flush above and see it's just we three left. My sister though, still hand over eyes, cries, Jack, please. I say, Lucy, it's fine, look. They've done a smashing job of her teeth and she's wearing all of her bling, including the plastic ring that Lucy got for her when we three and mum went on that ill-advised holiday to Ibiza. What's more, the way her hands are on her chest, I swear to you, and we haven't been looking, she's been nibbling on a chalky digestive. My sister comes round through fading tears to smile at Nan, wrinkled but rested. Lucy leaves, I look up. I notice my clay dinosaur, the only other thing to grace the same sideboard as Nan's fruit bowl. I know how much she said she liked it and there's no way I'm taking it home, so it might as well be thrown into the ground like everything else. So before family members can return from moments of sadness and cigarette breaks, I leap across the living room, grab the green stegosaurus and lay it by my Nan's feet. Or at least that was the plan, but Nan's feet are surprisingly large and the coffin's only small. Now I'm having to treat her as if she weren't dead at all. Look, Nan, I says, I'm moving her legs. I made him for you. You're the one who said you liked him and I've just spiked you. He's better with you. The grave men return, my uncle and cousins included. There's the coffin sealed, it's revealed that I'm to play a bigger part. The men lift, but my uncle's back gives, he slips, he says, Jack, quick, you're going to have to be Paul Bearer. I stop, real in shock, don't know what to say, so try a smile with, who's he? But for this tongue in cheek, I am punished swiftly, either divinely or by my very family. Because then I'm told, I'm going to have to carry the clear weighted feet.